All right, we've got both the uh, X idler and the X motor mount tightened up. We went ahead and attached on so you could see a finished uh, end, what the idler looks like. Basically all we did was we put the bearings in the spot uh, where the, the grooves are meant to be and uh, zip tied them in there and then just uh, tightened our coupler to uh, basically pinch both of the uh, both of the shaft and the threaded rod. So it's pretty simple. We're going to turn it around right now and do the same for the uh, motor mount. Uh, we're going to go ahead and find the motor mount real fast. Here it is. And do the same thing. So <clears throat> actually the, uh, the bearings can actually be slid in there after the fact. So we're going to go ahead and worry right now about getting the, uh, the coupling attached. So we need to loosen up this one since we put it on a little bit early. And then that's a little bit tight. There we are. That was the problem. This bottom one was way too tight. I'm not letting it open up a little at all. So once these are on, you're going to want to check to make sure the smooth and the threaded rods are uh, parallel with each other. So that way there's no uh, error when you're trying to move up and down or even when the uh, X is sliding along the axis. It all has to be squared away with each other to allow for free movement. Uh, between the two. And this piece is just not wanting to uh, spread open here. I'm not at all sure why. There we are. Okay. So, line this up here. Uh, you can kind of eyeball, make sure your motor and your pulley, or I'm sorry, your bearing are lined up because we're going to put the belt on afterwards. But uh, slide the motor shaft inside the coupling until they, uh, the two, two tips touch. And make sure it's on there and then you can go ahead and tighten back your coupling. So I'm going to tighten this real fast until I'm comfortable that it's not going to fall off as soon as I let it go. So, so I'll flip this over afterwards so you can see it. It's going to be it's going to look just like the other side did. So there won't be anything too uh, too new. This part's pretty straightforward. It's just one of those very important parts that has to be done correctly. Alright, so that's on there tightly. It is not going to fall off if I let it go. Now, take it on this side. You can see the bearings here. They still kind of slide freely, so I'm going to push them down just a little bit. This one in particular is uh, not wanting to slide, there we go. Alright, push that one back up. Dang it. Alright, zip tie these in place. Now they do have grooves on them, so they should work just fine without, but just to be safe, it's Always good to have zip ties handy. Alright, we will take and cut off the uh, extra slack here from the zip ties and our two X idler and X motor mount are parallel. Um, go ahead and double check all that before you move on to the next video segment. But next we are going to attach the X smooth rods as well as the um, X carriage which is already attached to 
to our extruder from a pre previous video. And uh, yeah, we'll be nearly done. All right, so uh, what we're gonna do now is put the X axis on, basically. Um, and all we're gonna need for that is our final two smooth rods that we'll have uh, left in our set. And uh, afterwards, we're gonna throw on the belt and then start digging into the electronics and putting all that together. But let's go ahead and do probably the simplest thing we've done yet. Um, we are going to slide smooth rod in on this side. It's going to need to, like we said earlier, sometimes the holes shrink a little bit. All right, there's that one. Let's do the other one. Okay, now uh, you see we have the motor and the uh, bearing on this side. You'll notice on your X carriage there's two little, uh, you know, uh, what do you call them, things that stick out. This is what the belt clamps are going to belt, or clamp the belt down to the, uh, the carriage, just to keep it tight basically. So we're going to slide that facing the same direction as those onto the uh, linear bearings. And there we are. Our carriage is on our axis. We're going to need to slide both of these through at once to the other side. Alright. Just a little bit tricky here. There we are. So get that put inside this one. We'll have this side go in there. And we'll make sure these are both pushed at least all the way through on both sides. Um, and obviously the more parallel they are the easier they'll go in. And if you need to hammer them a bit that's fine as well. Alright, they're stuck through all the way on both sides. Our X carriage is on here. It's definitely sliding smoothly. That's one thing that's very important is there cannot be any, uh, any doubt that this will slide easily. It's facing the right way. We're going to go ahead and put the belt on here in just a second after we make sure nothing came loose from uh, banging on it. That's probably wasn't too wise on my part, but we'll make sure everything's lined up and we'll continue with the next part. All right, uh, we got our x-axis evened up. As we said, it's sliding properly. Next, we're gonna throw on the belt. Uh, we've already done this on one end here. You're gonna have two more. This should be your final two of these. Um, they're gonna need the M3 nuts fit into the slots on top. And then you're gonna clamp one end of the belt, teeth facing upwards, nuts on top, uh, into the X carriage and just kinda tighten it up so the belt doesn't go anywhere. Then you want to feed this around your roller bearing, just like that, so it comes over there. And then back around on this side, um, around the pulley. Now because of the way it's on here, it could be a little bit tight, but there we are. Now try not to let the teeth grab it before you've pulled it tight, because it'll keep you from having a uh, tight pull. See right now I've pulled it around, and if I tug on it, it's tight. All right, so we're bringing this one around here. We clamp it down, it's still a little bit loose, so I need to give it some slack here and pull it around again. Let's go ahead and get that all the way to the very end. All right. So we're good on this end, we're going to bring this around and do the exact same thing on this end with this clamp that we just did uh, using our M3 20 millimeters, I believe is the number we're going for here. So let me go ahead and get one of these threaded in by hand before we get underneath it and uh, line up the other one.
Oh, there we are. I see it coming through. It's going to take a second just to get it all the way in. All right, so it started in by hand. We're going to tighten it up. Um, looks like the belt came loose a little bit, so I'm going to have to redo that. But, all right, the uh, belt we have is tight. Uh, it moves along the axis fine. The Y is still moving along the axis fine. We have all of our extra wires that are ready to be plugged in and uh, mounted. Uh, important to make sure that the entire printer is still as tight as it has been the entire time. We don't want anything coming uh, uneven after we've uh, leveled it all off. Um, we also went ahead now and mounted the electronics mounting plate here on the side in this matte fashion using uh, zip ties. And we are going to go ahead and make sure the x-axis is level on the Z. Um, make sure there's nothing you know loose that needs tightened and get into the end stops and electronics wiring.